recommendation for approval of the agenda with the revised personnel report. Is there a motion? Motion. Are there any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposes nay. Thank you. Next item is the approval of our minutes and payroll. Good evening. Uh, it's good to see everyone here this evening. Um, again, it's it's uh, encouraging to me uh, that our board meetings. If you were to if you were to write on a pencil and paper uh, the percentage of our meeting that is presenting in this case recognitions of our outstanding staff or uh, the time we spend on curriculum and, and budget and so on, I'm very uh, pleased because around the country and around the state, there's many uh, board meetings that are spent with issues, and so I'm very pleased with uh, that we have a chance and a whole section of people here uh, to recognize their outstanding staff and what they're doing. And so this evening, uh, it's, a, it's an honor uh, to uh, recognize our secretaries, our building secretaries, um, because they're the front end people. And being out in the buildings, uh, again, I try to get to each building weekly, I really do, and so then all the secretaries know that because I, I try to make sure I touch base with each one of them when I'm in the building. Um, and we, have, we all have a few inside jokes, and, and so it's great to see, to see you guys here this evening. Uh, but, but I do get to see firsthand. So this isn't just some canned speech, appreciating secretaries like, like is done around the country. Uh, this is a sincere appreciation uh, from what not only do I hear, but what I see firsthand. And what I see firsthand is you are the front end people of our school system. You're the first, when people enter that building, you're the first front end of what they see. And, and, and you're the first person that will have an impact on how they feel about that building uh, when they come into it, parents and community members. But what I would like to share in my, my speech and my presentation to you this evening, and my appreciation this evening, is how you are with the young people. I want you to know, and you know I love those kids, I want you to know I greatly appreciate that when those young people come to your office and they have problems, they have concerns, that you treat them with, with love, you're firm, and I've seen, you, I've seen you in action. You're firm, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, but you treat the kids with love, and, and that means a lot to me. And, and I know it means a lot to those young people. Because we underestimate sometimes the impact that when children are little, things that happen to them, like when we were children, things that, that we remember, good and bad, don't underestimate the impact that you have upon children that they'll remember about you and when they went to you for help. So we have a small token of appreciation for you. Uh, this evening, uh, but I cannot take credit, of course. Uh, Tina put these these uh, baskets together, so I don't know if you want to let them know what's in there. Or just, it's a surprise. <laughs> so, okay, we'll just do that. But, uh, but I'll call you up, and then I'll get I'll hand the baskets out. I don't know, building principals, if you want to, maybe I'll, I'll get through this, and then and then building principals, you're welcome to uh, say a few words. Uh, so first, uh, on the list here is Casey.
the staff, we are presenting Miss Hansford with a, a little small token of appreciation. She's the glue that binds us all together and keeps us straight. And um, She's been so good to me this year, starting out. I was thinking about things that needed to be done, and she was already getting those things done before I could even give her a list. So, uh, first class. Thank you. Uh, this is kind of unfair, but I'm going to I'm Mr. Bear Basket, and then I have the blue basket over here. I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to, because she's not going to be able to camera okay, bring it up. I'm not too embarrassed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Miss, uh, yeah. I've known Miss Foss for a long, long time, like 21 days, I think. <laughs> so, yeah. and it's, and, but it's amazing when I walk in and for the first day, it felt like. She treated me like she had known me for 21 years. And if you know Miss Foster, then that's, you understand. And I didn't know anything about her other than she was just nice and she was very calm after the storm. So I had to go to her daughter, who's laughing at me right now, and ask her, I said, well, what does she like to drink? She said, well, sweet tea. Mm -hmm. I said, what does is, what is she like sweet? She said, peanut m and that's easy. And I said, well, what does she like to eat? And she said, what is it, Winston? So that's what I got in the back. <laughs>
are the secretary, but you are Jackie Golden. <laughs> you're the everything person. Things don't get done when you're out of place. And so thank you so very much. We appreciate everything that you do. My next presentation is a little bit of a setup. Um, our recognition is a little bit of a setup because um, we will recognize central office staff at another board meeting as a group and everything the central office staff does. Um, so this was for building level administrators and you have to remember uh, Tina is very, very close to me and, and knows my every move. And so I had to be very uh, coy uh, about this, this next presentation. It's a little emotional for me because Anyone that knows Tina knows that uh, she really is a foundation to our school system. And by foundation, yeah, people, everybody's nodding their heads because you know it's, it's not just, these aren't just nice words, this is real. This is real life. So if you're not aware of it, then I'm glad that our meetings are broadcasting now. And I, I know our board is aware of it. Uh, but, but what Tina does day in, day out, people will have no clue. She knows everything about any operation, any process, and she knows it well. Uh, she knows her staff members. She takes time, uh, uh, if, there, if any student comes into our office, she takes time for that student. And even just today, uh, I mean, I've been totally happy about it, but a few people will come in in the middle of her being really busy. She's a human being, she's very busy, she has a lot going on, but she will take time. She will take time for every person individually that comes into that office with any concern. But more than that, to me, is the support that she is. Uh, she sends out each week, uh, she took a little break over the summer, uh, but each week she sends out a note of encouragement because she knows what we all go through in leadership and she understands it more than anybody. And so she sends out a spiritual note of encouragement each, each week um, that keeps us together uh, more than what people may realize uh, as a group and the central office uh, certainly understands that. So we will do another recognition for central office, uh, but there's no way, there's no way I could let an opportunity when we're talking about secretaries and when we're talking about front end people, this is the front end of this school system sitting right here. And so I love her, she's awesome. Tina Powell. Tina. <laughs> Student recognition, uh, Corey, I'm gonna talk about leadership and how you're a leader and you had me sweating a little bit, coming in a little bit late, but uh, uh, tonight we're gonna recognize one of our students, uh, Tatori Smith, and I, I, I call him Corey, I know him pretty well. Um, he, he's one of our leaders. And what I will say, and I want Corey to hear, and I wanna make sure he understands, and I'm gonna find these leaders in each one of our buildings, in McKenzie, actually just all, all the school buildings that we have, secondary school buildings. Um, and here's why it's important to me. So you're gonna hear the same speech more than once. Anybody that has coached before, especially at maybe the varsity, junior varsity level understands a key component of your team, or if you've been on sports teams, I know we have athletes sitting here. If you've been on sports teams, a key component of that team is your leadership, your upperclassmen leadership. Usually your senior leadership, but not all, sometimes your juniors and seniors, usually juniors and seniors. And what I want Corey to understand as I present this uh, certificate to him, I want him to understand the importance of that. When I was the head basketball coach, I could, and I, again, I know we have coaches sitting up here, um, I could only do so much as a coach. It was from the internal leadership that, that really a lot happened, good and bad. It's from the internal leadership. So my captains were a very key component part of when I had successful years and, and some years that weren't so successful. A lot was on those senior captains, or on those upperclassmen captains, uh, because they're one of the group. Because, and not only that, and we have a child right sitting right over there, a little one. What I wanna make sure Corey and our upperclassmen understand is that whether they choose it or not, whether they choose to be leaders or not, those little ones are watching you. And they're watching your every move, good and bad. They're watching you. 
and it's a great responsibility. And this year, a lot of my recognitions are gonna be about leadership. It's a great responsibility that you hold. And I want you to know, I appreciate what I've seen, what I've heard about you, and I appreciate you even helping us this summer uh, in the hiring process uh, of the principalship. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that you care about the community and, and your school and your classmates, and again, those little ones, that you watch out for them and you provide a good example. So with all that said, and with the pressure I put on this young man, and I don't, I don't mind that, uh, let's, let's uh, recognize uh, Jacoria Smith. It is warm in here this evening. Sorry, we, we didn't turn the air on soon enough, so I, I, I apologize for the heat. And by the way, the recognitions are over, but you're wa certainly I encourage you and welcome you to uh, stay for the, for the meeting there. You go ahead. Go ahead. One more. Student achievement. Uh, if you've been watching the news, uh, you don't have to watch the news. Actually, it was just two days ago, I was looking for a story that we had on the news uh, regarding our new playground over at uh, uh, Greenville Elementary. And even that evening on the news, there was a story about cell phones and cell phone usage in schools. I have a friend in, that teaches in a very large district in Dallas, Texas. I'm what I call mega districts when you're talking 80, 90,000 student school system. And that school system elected to pull cell phones out altogether, cell phone out technology out of the schools. And when I, when I was talking to my friend about that, what I thought I would hear is I thought I would hear that it would be linked to student achievement. That's what I thought, that's why I would think schools would pull them out. And now that I've done more research and I would encourage Board of Education, do your own research, you don't have to, you don't, won't have to Google too far. Uh, you really won't, in community, do your own research. It doesn't, it's not hard. The reason that schools are pulling them out is certainly academics. School is statistical, it's becoming statistical that when cell phones are pulled out, academic achievement's going up, and they, they're starting, it's still new, pulling them out, but they're starting to correlate that, direct correlations to academic achievement. But the reason that this school system, according to my friend in Dallas, Texas, pulled them out, is the well-being of the student. I was unaware of the connections between social media during the school day and teen suicide. I was unaware the social media used during the school day, and I guess teen, teens now harm themselves. And, it, and a lot of it has to do with the social media that is taking place during the school day. And so with that said, we, I don't mean to turn this into a lecture tonight about the social media and cell phones in the school, uh, but we've been talking about that in administrative meetings as far as what we want to do in our school system. And so Tina will be coordinating with the Board of Education if you agree to it, that and I agree with the administrators. I think it was actually Mr. Marlow, uh, if you don't mind me saying Mr. Marlow, that brought it up and it was a good point. Uh, it was you, wasn't it, Mr. Marlow, that brought up that we should be on the same page. That we need to be on the same page going through this together. And when we say we, the whole governance team, Board of Education and leadership. Because this will be a huge issue in the school system. And I wanna make sure the community knows and I'm aware I'm talking on, on TV or on the, on, on the line right now, I'm aware of that. So I wanna make sure I make it clear, I'm not saying that we're pulling them out of school. I'm not saying that we're changing what we're doing current policy. I'm just saying let's have the discussion because it was more serious than I even thought when I was bringing the discussion up to our administrative table for academic reasons. That's why I was bringing it to the table. I was unaware of, and it's heartbreaking to me, it's heartbreaking to me of the well-being of the students and the connection to social media and I, and I stress during the school day. And, and I know it's on the weekends and evenings as well. So if the board's okay, 
uh, we'd like to set up a workshop and we can do, you know, we can do a one hour, one item workshop and Tina can coordinate some dates. Is that okay that we, we coordinate that or is there any, any thoughts on that? It, it would be nice, sooner than later. Yeah, that's a great idea. Is it, everybody okay with that? Well, we'll have to check our calendars. Okay, check your calendars. We meetings already on the calendar. Right, but for the regular meeting you're talking about. Right. Yes. Take it back to the I like it. Is that not our budget hearing? No, well, I don't know what the budget hearings are with time. We've got two. Yeah, I like that. So you don't have to let me know now. I know I'm springing this on you now. Tina will send you some emails and we'll confirm that, but that's a good idea. We'll just go at five o'clock, if possible, on the regular. Is that enough time for everybody to be prepared? Well, yeah, because what we need now is general direction. Okay. So we're not gonna get into technicalities because we do have a policy committee. What we're looking for from the Board of Education is general direction to take this possibly. We may not change anything possibly to the policy committee, and at least for administrators to hear the general direction and the thoughts of the board, because I do agree with what was brought up at, at our administrative meeting, that we better, not that we shouldn't be together in everything, but we better be tightly close together, uh, because it's gonna be, it could possibly be a groundbreaking. Uh, thank you. Right, no, we'll have them at the meeting. You bet. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. We'd like to hear from the administrators yeah, I agree. at the work session. Yeah regards to their thoughts and what they're thinking about. Yeah, and we've been discussing this, and so that, that won't be a problem. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. yeah. We'll invite all the teachers and any of them who want to come and like to make prepared. Good idea. Especially the drum club. Yeah, yeah we'll hold the workshop right here. We have room. And on the same, uh, uh, let's not forget, uh, we have a parent that we want to talk to for many but let's, uh, we'll uh, or someone from PTA or PTO, but uh, we'll send them an invite. Let's, let's bring them in to yeah. the very beginning because, of this. Because so again, they better be in the, on it as well. Let's bring them in to the very beginning of this so that we I don't agree. have this information flowing around out there because this is going to be a very explosive. Right. And that's why I'm bringing it here tonight. I agree with you. So we'll do that, good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. We'll try to get it across section. Just basically across the section. Okay. We'd like to have a kind of like a listening session session for the board at first and yeah. then across. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Good idea. Thank you. I don't think it's a case of whether or not phones are a problem or not. No. The, the phones are a problem is whether or not we want to do something about it or not, or whether or not we you know what what do we do? If we decide to do something about it, they are a serious problem. Um, you know, you could talk to someone in my business who, on a daily basis, in the middle of a movie where people have paid nine dollars a piece if they're an adult, somebody phone rings and somebody answers in the middle of a movie. Hello, and has a conversation. And now I've got ten or fifteen or twenty people coming out screaming at me. Well, what do you think happens with teachers? Um, you know, I have. I have employees that are students at Greenville High School texting all the time during class. It's very difficult for teachers to. Uh, I mean, I text all the time. Are you in school? Why, why is this happening? It has to be a problem. So it's not whether or not it's a problem or not. It's a problem. Do we want to do something about it? And if we do, what do we want? And, that, and that's why I want to have this discussion. Focus just on that. Touched on what we talked about first meeting. I was going to take five issues and discuss
in a meeting because Correct. we are going to come together in a meeting. Yeah. Let's just hold that for the meeting. Agreed. Well, so we can prepare. Yeah, yeah I understand. Okay, next slide. Uh, maintaining programs, I, I do want to uh, commend uh, building principals, especially uh, at the elementary level. Uh, and I know Miles couldn't be here this evening because of a football game. Uh, but I do commend the principals for moving forward on providing more clubs and activities for our young people. Uh, no matter what we label it, whether we label it Butler County Commitment, whether we label it just common sense or Maslow's hierarchy of, of needs, uh, no matter what we label it, uh, I have, well, statistics would show it, and common sense would tell you when the kids are connected to something, uh, when they're connected to something positive, academic achievement does improve. And so we will continue uh, to go down that road. Uh, but I also wanna make sure people understand that we need to continue to look at clubs that are science oriented. Um, you know, we're gonna look to, I believe we're pursuing a grant uh, with robotics. And it's something that was very important to me in my previous school is that we continue to look for uh, not only clubs maybe or, uh, that are oriented around extracurricular activities that are typically known like athletics and so on, uh, but also science oriented clubs are gonna be very important. Uh, so we will continue as we look at our programs in our school, uh, we, no matter what we label it, we're gonna continue to look at ways to get our students involved uh, because that's gonna be the key. And I love what Miss Ashley's doing and I love what uh, Miss Adair is doing and I love what our principals are doing with the academic focus. Don't get me wrong, but for long-term sustainable growth, it's gonna be about our kids being involved uh, and, and again, it's about the whole well-being of the whole child, and we're going to continue to focus on that. Uh, school, school climate. Uh, again, thank you. I thank the secretary for being here this evening, uh, and that recognition. I hope you, I hope you received it as sincere from the heart, uh, because we do appreciate what you do, and we will continue those recognitions. Uh, Corey, I appreciate you taking time this evening to be here. We will continue to do that. Uh, we had two good meetings. Uh, we met with the uh, custodians this week. And we had a very productive meeting with our transportation staff. Uh, so I want the Board of Education to know we will continue. Uh, as we look at school climate, a big part of that, of course, is listening to the inputs of employees, and that's gonna be a big part of what we do. Evaluation process. Uh, while the teacher evaluation process is ongoing, uh, I, I want the Board to know I'll start evaluation of the administrators uh, soon after Christmas. And so I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, we're continuing. And I don't know if it's, it's, it's been done here across the board in, in some years, if, if at all. And that is what we're working towards is all employees are evaluated each year. Uh, no matter what the position in the school system, our evaluation process is aimed at improvement. And, and all, of the, all our employees need to know where they stand. I feel strongly about that, no matter what your position in the school system. And again, it's not a got you system. It, it's, it's an evaluation process to improve what we do to become better. Facilities and technology, <clears throat> uh, just so you know, we, as you know, and, and this isn't a broken record on this, there's some, some new updates here. Uh, we are looking to standardize our equipment, supplies, and materials. I wanna make sure the Board of Education understands that the effort of doing this is to raise our standard of cleanliness and operations in the building. So I wanna make sure the Board understands not everyone will be on board all the time. That, that sometimes there will be resistance to change of, of processes that people maybe have done for years. And, 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 and you're welcome to let me know to sit in on these meetings. We have them monthly, so please, please let me know. It'd be nice if you would do that. Come in and sit on the meeting and see yourself because I want you to see and I want our community to know these meetings are oriented towards input and listening. But as we standardize what we're doing, not everyone's happy all the time as we raise the standard of the cleanliness in our building. And so, um, while, while so far it's been, the meetings have been very positive, we are gonna get to a point where we're gonna say, look, this is how we clean restrooms. This is the level of cleanliness we expect. Here's the equipment we use and so on. And, and sometimes change for people of color. And so I just want the board to know, you may hear things as we go down this road, uh, but we really do need to standardize what we do. Cleanliness and operation and functionality of buildings is very important and it does link to student achievement. And actually, I think it was part of our survey uh, results that we just had that, that that is important to the staff and students as well, of course, is the environment. Right, next slide. 
safety and security, we will continue uh, to update our plans. Uh, and I appreciate what Captain Tan is helping us on. And, and Joe, I appreciate what you do on that. And so there really is no change there. Communications and public relations, uh, it, it's work, but you know, we continue uh, to attend those meetings that are listed up there. And I would encourage board members that if you would like to uh, attend any of those meetings with me, I think it's good public relations uh, for people to see you in those meetings. I know you're already very busy, uh, but any meeting that you see listed up there, if you would like to attend any meeting with me, please let me know. And I'm sure the groups would appreciate it. Uh, the clubs and organizations in our community would appreciate it. And Brandy will give her report this evening, so I won't steal her show. Any questions? that I'll save a couple of minutes um, so um, I want to come before you generally I'm talking about elementary school 
And at this point in time, we are in the middle of collecting our data for the beginning of the school year. We ended on a higher note with elementary school. Very proud of everything that we were doing there. Uh, one of the things that we don't look at as much is high school. And uh, partially because, you know, I found myself a little out of field because I came in as the K-8 director and was kind of given high school. And so, um, but um, we are, um, we got work to do. And so it's jack of all trades, master of none. I'm the K-12 director, so wherever we tend to focus our efforts, that's where we tend to grow. But I've got from pre-K all the way here. If I have to pick a focus, um, then I'm focusing on the foundation because if that's not right, then everything else is going to crumble. So it was very intentional where I started. However, I'm really concerned about our AP2 school. So uh, tonight I just want to give you an update of where we are. So if you go ahead to the uh, first slide. Um, this, now, I could work this any which way, but I'm just gonna just say it like it is. I'm truly concerned. Uh, yes, we had way more students that tested, well, I don't say way more, about 20 more students that tested in uh, last year that tested the year before, but in every category, English, math, reading, science, we're down, and I'm concerned. Um, so again, I don't, I don't come before you sugarcoating the reality, because that is, and, and so at the top, if you could see it, those are our uh, percent of students who met the benchmarks for English, math. Yeah, so if you, for those of you that can't read it out, I'll, I'll just be blunt. English was 28%, math was 4%, reading 11%, and science 5 And we only had one student in the district last year that met all four. Well, why am I concerned? We have a lot of dual enrollment going on. So there's a disconnect between what I see here and what we're offering, and we've got to do better. And we don't get better by covering stuff up. We need to be out front and let people know that we need help. And so we reached out for help. The second thing is the five-year trends. You can see it all the way down. These reports exist for every school. This is the APC profile, uh, APC profile report. Each of the schools have them, and please trust and believe they have been going in already and analyzing these. Uh, so these are our district averages. So um, 15, 15.4 in mathematics, 15.2 in reading, uh, 15.6 in science, and then a composite of 15.5. So just to be clear, uh, for to meet college readiness benchmark, in English that should be 18 and our district average is 15. In mathematics, it should be 22 and it's 15. In reading, um, it should be 22 and it's 15.2 in science. It should be 23 and it's at a 15.6. We have some work to do. So that is our current reality. Again, I do not sugarcoat. That is where we are. However, you know me, we always have a plan. So if you would go to the next slide. Here are the next steps. Now, I will say that our administrators have already been looking at their data. Uh, Kudos and hats off to everyone, but I remember uh, Miss Benson, it may have been her first day on the job. If it wasn't her first, it may have been her second, and she called and she said, what can I do? I have no money, <laughs> she said, but I'm concerned about these scores. So it's not that people are just sitting by idly doing nothing, but what gets measured gets done, and if we don't put it out there, then we surely will not do anything about it. So. Here are some just very minimal next steps. So what I have actually in my hand is this book. I went to a workshop last year when I was first uh, selected to um, take on nine through 12. And I said to myself, I've never done nine through 12. So I need to grow myself in this area. And I went to the, is that my phone? It's your left, my little heart too. Please turn it off. Maybe that's somebody telling me to stop talking. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. Um, so when I went to this conference, they gave us this book called Begin With the End in Mind. It takes those profile reports and it breaks them down. It attaches each score for students to measures for growth. And we had someone come in last year and begin this discussion. 
and they were good discussions, but did it translate into action, not based on the stories that I saw, but again, I did not spend as much time in high school as I did in elementary school. So, so the first thing is we have to look at the data, we have to own the data, then we need to make plans. Plans have been made, principles have been together. Some of the things that already are on the agenda in moving forward, and you will see them listed here, I'm just gonna give you a quick shot. You can read it, of course, I won't read it verbatim, but Mastery Prep is gonna provide some ACT uh, prep for our juniors in particular. One of the things that Ms. Adair and I have talked about is we really need to go down to ninth and 10th grade and get them because it's almost, I say too late, but by the time they get there, that, that foundation has been set. Again, that's why we're on the other end, but we've got thoughts about what we could do. We just have no money for how we can do it. These things that I'm talking about right now, Gear Up has already partnered with us in doing some of these things. They're gonna supply, so under this line, Gear Up is helping us. They're gonna be supplying online access to ACT Mastery Essentials. It's 24 to 36 hours of instruction for ELA reading and math, uh, and math and science. They will also provide digital licenses for all teachers for ACT Element Bell Ringer. So the bell ringers that schools have been trying to make up and figure out what can we do, they're gonna provide it. It's broken into 185 to 10 minute exercises that will expose all of our students to some type of ACT type question. And then an ACT boot camp and parents, this is what I need you to know. So if you have students that you want to have that extra, that extra boost up for the ACT, there's a boot camp that will be offered in February. Now, notice the session will be limited to 120 participants for each school. So we've got to figure out some type of way to make that equitable, but it's usually first come, first serve when it goes out. But if you don't know that that's an option, you don't know to look for it. So I, for people listening at home and for people here in this room, please tell your neighbors, your cousins, your sisters, your friends, that's something else that'll be available. So as you can see, we've already got some things in place for helping, but we can leave that horse to the water, we can't make it drink. So we can offer all of these things, but if no one shows up, it's just a great offering. If no one comes and get involved, it's just a great offering. So we want your help and we need your help as it relates to our ACT scores. Sorry. Any questions? It is my understanding initially that they said juniors, but that's a big group for some of our places like McKenzie. Well, that's right. what I was about to say. If we have 120 spots at McKenzie or 120 spots at Sylvana, and you've got, well, that covers all the juniors in Sylvana and McKenzie, unless something really changed um, in enrollment this year, why can't the Bengal kids, if they don't make it 120, why can't they go down to Sylvana and McKenzie and they only cover here? But we can ask, Rita McLean has been in those meetings and in discussion with Gira, bless her, uh, because she's really taken the lead on that. Uh, I was not in those sessions, but again, we have not because we ask not, so it doesn't hurt to ask because when we're not paying for it, we don't get the right to rule, but I would definitely ask. I mean, like I said, the only thing we can do is ask. So, and I don't have a problem with asking. You can ask anybody. I feel like a person that sucks out all the time. Uh, if you could move to the next one, and we're going to fly through because I have about 10 seconds left on my 10 minutes. Yeah. So, if that's not the only thing but I just wanted to put out that those are the immediate things and then you can see other things in everybody's CIP. All right, so here's the quick thing on the surveys. Um, highest performing items are these that are listed. This is with our students.
survey. So at the top, what you will see is uh, the elementary scores and the bottom, you will see the high school scores. What I wanna point out is in both of these categories for the highest totals for our surveys, our students were saying that, hey, my teachers want me to do my best work. My school is preparing me. Uh, my school wants me to succeed, okay? This is great on the surface. And I presented this at Institute, so I won't take too long. So our students do think that we want them to learn and they do think that we're preparing them. So that's the great news. So to the next two services, students don't care what you know until they know that you care. Next one. But here's the, the bottom line on the flip side of this. Even though they think that we want them to do well, based on this survey data of what was their lowest for both middle school, I mean for elementary and high school, it, they don't believe that we believe in them as people, as individuals. That's what I read into this. In my school, all students are treated with respect. In my school, uh, students help each other even if they're not friends. In my school, the building and grounds are safe, clean, and provide a healthy place for a living. These things were low. The principal and teachers ask me what I think about at school. Do you see the disconnect between the, the highest and the lowest? The highest is like the stuff of school, the things of school. They know that we want them to do that, but then I almost question why they think we want them to do it. Is it for us or is it for them? So regardless, we have a, a disconnect and we need to figure out some way to get that back together. So on the other end of that, our parents, no parent left behind. Uh, I feel welcome at my child's school. We only had 324 people respond. This district is way bigger than 324 parents, but yet that's all that cared to respond. And maybe it's because they think, well, who's really listening? Is anybody even gonna read this? And even if they do read the surveys, are we gonna do anything about it? Is anything gonna change? Well, we certainly won't change it if we don't know that change is needed. And when I see that only 55% of people that took the time to even do the surveys even think that they're welcome at the school, that's a problem. That's a problem. My child, school encourages me to be involved in my child's education, 51%. I'm aware of the school's academic goals and how I can be involved, 43%. Okay, next one. Child, school, home connection, we're disconnected. Somehow, we're, we're, we're doing school, but we're not getting our, our community involved in a way that's gonna, if we can strengthen that bond, then that's gonna be powerful. So I've heard things like sitting home the homework and having these contacts in a way that's really meaningful for parents because when I have parents that say on number 10 and number 11, 10 in particular, I know what my child should know and be able to do in reading or no mathematics at his or her grade level. Only 39% of our parents are saying they know and I can attest to that because we've had a lot of people come whose students have failed to matriculate to the next grade level and have come to the district office and we're breaking things down and saying this in particular is what your child's short of because all we know is did they pass and we're not understanding that they're, they're missing these gaps and we have to do a better job but again there's always the plan this is our overall district every school has broken their own stuff down so go to the next slide plan to get our parents back we need our parents back in the school. We need our parents back in the school like we need prayer and everything else back in the school. We need our parent support. School teams came together in the summer. They analyzed the surveys. They got creative and they have a plan. See your individual school CIPs, parents. If you've never seen your school CIP, go to the school. You have access to it. It's not a secret. It's not something that should sit on the shelf and know that it is a continuous improvement plan. So we are constantly trying to improve, but we cannot improve because we're all thinking the same thing until somebody comes from outside and tells us something different. We'll continue to do what we've done and continue to get the same results. Questions? Thank you.
anyone? Okay. Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Okay, item A is approval of principal contract. Yes, and I recommend approval of principal contract Judy Benson, principal, and Linda Steele, and Jane Howard, principal, in the high school. Okay, we have a recommendation for approval of principal contract. Questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Thank you, both of you. Approval of bid results for uh, produce for child nutrition program. We recommend approval of bid results for the produce for the child nutrition program uh, as presented on the screen. For school program. We recommend approval. Okay, so is there a motion for bid results? Motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Item 10, personnel report. So we recommend uh, the revised personnel report and the revision is 8.19. And I want to note, if you would note that Mr. Behag has been speaking to you on the uh, with Ms. Vickery uh, at the top, that the effective next date of the retirement is October 1st. Down below, uh, there's a leave of absence through September. So I do want to make that note. And then you can see highlighted item number under employment, uh, number 10 from Governor Halo Lee uh, in the high school administration. Uh, that's our chat where you can see bullet item number as well. So I do recommend personnel report as presented, revised. Okay, so is there a motion on the revised personnel report? Any questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Okay. Mr. Gerhan was in his job here, so I thought we had no. Oh, there he is. He's hiding out in the back. Mr. Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, 